Welcome to the latest edition of Trojan Football Talk. I'm your host, Tom Vartanian. Today's show brought to you by AmeriCue Credit Union for every day, for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. Part of Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of Trojan Football Talk. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance of Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C, make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary specific options. Nikki C's, your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customers' needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at 7valleyagency.com. 7 Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at isaacmerker.com or on their Facebook page. By m and Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland. Open Mondays through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. m and has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their new uh, Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO. That's 753-8646. And look for their new food truck in the spring of 2022. By Crop Growers LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact KC Slade at 607 591 2460 for more information. And by the First National Bank of Dryden at 12 South Main Street in Homer. Safe, secure, and locally owned for all your banking needs. For more information, stop by, call 607 662 4179, or check them out online at drydenbank.com. Well, it's been a while, but hey, we're back to the regionals for the Homer football team this week. Uh, of course, uh, waiting for my familiar foe. I do have to correct myself. I kept saying a rematch of 2017. The last couple of cash you may have heard me say, 2017 was Shenango Forks. It's, it's, a, it's a flop year. Uh, 2014 was the last time we played Maine in well, and right. uh, lost that game up at the CNS 27 to 10. So now that's a rematch with Maine and well. Interesting as well. I don't remember ever seeing the state do this, but they are updating the uh, rankings, which is interesting enough. And so, Coach Gary Pasilic, of course, joining me. And uh, I, first, I guess I'll say this ironically, the last time I ever can remember Homer being ranked number one was in 1986 when they were declared state champions by the sports writers. But Homer goes into this game as number one. And interestingly enough, Maine and Well has got their wins back. They are 9-1. and one. Right. They are ranked number three in the state. Right. And a friend of yours is in the middle, and number two. Batavia is number yeah. two, Grant. Coach Brennan Briggs, yeah, doing a <laughs> phenomenal job. My home to his alma mater after doing his student teaching field work and uh, coached with Homer football. Uh, got to meet his family. His dad was a career coach. So Brennan's doing a great job over at Batavia. And, you know, selfishly, wouldn't we love to play each other? You know, it would really uh, it'd be amazing to play against such a quality class guy who's taken his alma mater back to prominence in a very short window of time, and they really got buy-in over there. But right now, all we're worried about is Maine Enwell. Um, you know, they regardless of what their record was, according to technicalities, I mean, clearly one of the best five, four or five teams in the state, I believe. Um, you're right. It was 2014. You know, we have a 2 and one record, but we played men and well years ago. I believe it was back when we were in a stack even in the 70s. So I, I have to peek back at that. I don't worry too much about that stuff. But uh, we had them 10-7 at half. 
It's the Sooner Syracuse. They had the fourth longest winning streak in the country in 2014. Uh, they were doing a, a national level documentary on them, and uh, we really played well. We played, our, our, our kids came with a ton of heart and effort, and we had a few more guys playing both ways. And as I mentioned probably in a previous podcast, Maine Enwell did a good job of not out coaching themselves, staying with their power and their option game. And uh, they wore us down. They actually had Coach Gallagher's son directing the ship there that year with a quarterback, and uh, he was a tremendous athlete. Um, actually, he was a flanker. I shouldn't say that. He was the flanker. But the reality is, is that uh, they just stayed patient. They fed the ball, uh, fed the ball to a kid named Wolfork, who went on to Army and had a great career. And uh, I'm, I'm quite sure he was the running back. That they just patiently kept feeding him the ball, wore us down a little bit, playing a few less kids both ways, and uh, ends up 27-10. Good game, heck of a game, but uh, they put one put one in at the end to make it decisive at the very end. So uh, a lot of respect for Coach Gallagher and his staff. You know, they do it right. They play physical, smart, uh, they, they good play-action football. They run every phase of option you've ever seen on film. I mean, you know, there's... Uh, multiple forms and we'll probably talk about a little later here in the uh, broadcast but yeah you know the polls are nice I always tell the players it's not a knock uh, as a rule, almost all the sports writers that get the vote on that have never seen us practice or play. Uh, they're going on reputation. They're going on scores. They're going on uh, a little recent history, and which is the thing you got to do, right, if you don't get to see someone live. And, uh, you know, we appreciate the respect we're getting, but that doesn't help us win. You know, it's a matter of we just got to worry about all the things we're practicing and prepping for with Maine Well, I think we're going to be okay. It's going to be a battle. I would be shocked if this isn't another one of those harder to be a spectator than coach because you be so busy as a coach trying to figure it out throughout the game that I, I really think uh, both teams will come and deliver a real good effort. And nothing else, a change of venue this time around. I mean, the two times that the uh, 05 and 17, the loss of the Shenango Forks took place at Union Indicott. This time we're going to be at uh, well, a school and a stadium named after another legendary coach, much like Mike Norris. They butted heads a couple times back in the day. Vesto, uh, Dick Hoover was the uh, coach there, so it's Dick Hoover Stadium. Yes, Coach Vesto Hoover. High School at 3 o'clock, so it's going to be a... Uh, Kind of, kind of like almost like a throwback to the '70s, Homer and Vestal. Yeah, I, I love. It's a beautiful facility. Um, Mr. Josh Gannon is our athletic director, and he's. We had our. Uh, we had a virtual. We had a meeting Monday, a staging meeting, and he just. You can. He's done this before. I believe Mr. Gannon was at UE, um, and you mentioned that we lost at UE um, to Shenango Forks in '05 and '17. In '17, we lost our tailback and linebacker, uh, Mr. Do Everything, Johnny Horner, in the dome. Landed on a guy's foot and hurt his throat, and he couldn't play. And and that really was significant because that was a battle. That game was a battle. Again, the score ended up a little bit lopsided, Ben. But the truth is, it was a battle, and and uh, might have been a different game with that one key player. So, but the reality is, 14 we played men and well, and and you know they showed their their mo, we showed ours, and it hasn't changed a whole lot by any means. But yeah, Vestal High School, the, the legend Coach Hoover. I mean, I love that there are still some people who really respect and pay attention to that guy. Guys like Coach Mike Norris and, and Coach Hoover, you know, they set the stage for doing it the right way, you know, teaching their football players to play with character and class and dignity, play hard-nosed, but clean and, and uh, just a tremendous reputation through the years. This facility's gorgeous, and as I said, Mr. Gannon, who's uh, the AD over at Vestal now, uh, just r the organization and the readiness for this event is pretty cool to watch, and I'm excited. I think... You know, regardless of weather, both teams play in the same conditions, and I don't think it's going to be too crazy in a negative way on Saturday. You know, spectators, bring your blankets, bring your, your, your water-resistant covers and your jackets and stuff, and have a good time rooting on these high school kids are giving everything they've got. Yeah, I haven't seen the latest forecast. The, 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 one, I, the one that I, I've seen, at least, was still, like, low 40s and sunny, so I mean, at least right. it's going to be a nice day if uh, a person wants to go down and sit outdoors and watch three football games that day because it'll be you know a game before again and the game after so uh, you know it'll, it'll be it'll be a fun day and of course when you joke about the history of section four football you talk about vesto well, right across the river well it is ue and of yes course, angeline so yes so yep. there's a lot of river battles Shoot, there's books written about the coach day. angeline you know i mean yeah. so yeah again that zone of the state and 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 uh it's a compliment it's like going to dodgeville i mean i we joked about uh, one of our former assistants chris conley years ago went to uh clinton new york for a little while um but he was a it was a 
he, he, I'm trying to think of where he went to high school now. I'll think of it in a minute. But Coach Conley was a social studies teacher on our football staff. He goes, oh, well, he ends up coaching at Dahlsville. And he goes, Coach, it's like being in the 50s. You go into the local diner, and the waitress is talking to the, the you know, the, the retired guy sitting at the diner having a cup of coffee about who's going to be the quarterback next year at Dahlsville, you know. And, and it's just, you know what, sometimes the simplicity of, of, of that kind of life is pretty awesome. And I think with you look at Maine and well, you look at Homer, somehow we've done a pretty good job of maintaining tradition and I know it's because we have continuity and uh, and we have coaching staffs that like I said we may have different personality styles and flavors but the reality is we have the same core values on our staffs and as a result that 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 diffuses to the kids and they understand that yes this matters yeah, it's only football right but it really does matter and uh, what's really fun about it is you can talk about true traditions um, so I, I think we're all going to be in for a little bit of a treat and uh, like you said going down to that old Vesta High School you know the old Golden Bears I think they're called uh, you know that'll be a it's a great facility and they have locker room options they We'll be in the elementary school right next to the stadium. So each team will have a full locker room, and they won't have to, like, race in and out like you do in the Dome. You know, you'll be able to go in and change, get ready, talk, work, you know, with your players. Then you come out to the field, warm up, and play. And then when you go back in, you're not going to be raced out of there because another game. They have four locker room facilities, two directly involved with the stadium, and then another another room they'll be using in the stadium, I believe. And then the elementary school uh, has a nice open area that you can use as a locker room. So, you know, there's a lot of nice things going on. And, and I know I've told our players, you know, understand people have passion for high school football that are supporting this and you don't get great you don't get great uh rewards for hosting it's really a generosity thing and i i really appreciate vestal for hosting this thing last part of the quote unquote i kind of call it the fantasy part of the before we get into the new nuts and bolts of the game is uh this has been an interesting year year first you know the first win over new hartford of course to win the sectional title last week uh first win ever you know home win on VVS's turf, uh, beat VVS twice in the same season, which is kind of another first. So a little first there. Homer 0 3 in regional games. Right. Can, th- th- it's kind of like, is this the team that's going to keep those first coming and make this the first regional win out of four tries? You know, uh, if you look back, you know, twice to Forks and once to Maine Andwell, and the Maine Andwell, like I told you at the time, uh, they had the fourth longest active winning streak in the United States of America, every level of football. I mean, that's insane. That's awesome. You know, um, the the group we're going to play at Maine and well, um, you know, there I think several of these kids were involved with the uh, the baseball little league world series that they won. You know, so y- you're right. We're 0 three in the in the uh, for the quarterfinals. It's not the first round. It's really the for us. It's the fourth round because we play three state level games to earn the sectional title. Now we're playing for the central regional title, and then we'll get the western zone title if we earn that. You know, and then it's the New York State Championship. Um, but the the truth be known is that the, the the games we've played some amazing teams and they outplayed us. They outplayed us. Uh, you know, like I said, Maine Anwell did a great job of being patient, even though we were leading at half. And uh, you know, you're not you're, at this level. You're, everybody you're playing is good. They're well coached. They're disciplined. They're tough. And uh, so yeah, we're 0 and 3. Um, I do. We look back, and it's not a knock. In 05, we were so excited. It had been since 86 that we'd won a sectional crown. We'd been in the playoffs, but even in the A level, when we were playing way above our enrollment level, we were in the playoffs. But we hadn't won it. And the first three days of that next school week were almost annoying in the sense that we had to do a lot of cool, positive things in our community. Everybody wanted a little piece of us, and you know whether it was going over to the elementary school and, and uh, you know for a celebration with our players with those elementary kids and and that's awesome but i think it clouded our hunger for wanting to to finish it off this year's team we've talked about a lot of small goal multiple goals we have we have goals within the game we have goals to win the game of course to win the next game we play but we had a goal to be league champs you know we respect that league our league that we're in the B West, and we got that. We achieved that goal, and our guys were pumped about that, but not satisfied. They were like, "Okay, goal one done," and and they enjoyed the moment. I loved it. We, with our experience, we remind them enjoy this moment. But immediately back to work with focus, and we want to win the sectional title. We don't want to, we don't want to win a game, and we want to win the sectional title. So we achieved that goal in the dome last Saturday, and you could sense it when we got home. 
before we get off the bus, that they were so ecstatic. The parade was amazing. Thank you to Officer Pittman and, and the Cortlandville and Homer Fire Departments and all the community members and family members that made that a pretty unique often not even once in a lifetime event and we got to be a part of it but you could sense before we get off the bus to enjoy a little pizza on you Mr. Vartanian um, and a little bit of bottled water and some pizza at the end of our trip you could see that they were like okay this is sweet this is amazing and this is goal number two now it's time to work to check box three which is to win a regional game you know then the western zone game and then and then the state championship so so uh, i i feel like you know win lose or draw saturday there is no doubt in my mind there is a focused commitment a willingness to want to play their best for each other that we're witnessing in practice every day this week um you know it was kind of cool we're lifting weights in the dark because we have an outdoor weight room right now that we're using and, and uh, we finally can get into our indoor weight room just recently but the weather was nice last night it was, it was reasonably warm uh we had a uh, player from the early 90s come to practice and observe the whole thing Waylon McCall and I'll talk a little bit about him in a minute but you know we're doing our thing and you can see the focus and the determination to perfect what our game plan is so that no matter what we walk off the field we give our best effort if somehow Maine Enwell finds a way to beat us they're going to earn it and uh, you know so I'm not worried about that you know that you're, you're coaching teenagers man and guess what it's the greatest level on the planet because they do they go they never try to make a mistake they don't worry about their ego they don't worry about you know you know their stats and all that and uh, you know I look at my quarterback as a great example of that you know Jake Calibro so when all we're worried about is next game is main end well this is going to be an awesome high school football game for people to have fun at and the, the irony of course as we say section three every year some, usually the same cast of characters are when it gets to the semifinals and the finals, but it's a lot of times it's somebody different that comes out with the championship just because of the competitive nature of class B and well all the classes in uh, right in three um, section four. It's like just you might as well just open a book and say, oh yeah, which year is this? It's the only thing that's changed, Snangle Force is down enough that they're a C now. They've been a C for a few years now. And Tioga, who used to be a power in C, has been the power of D, D. Yep. forever. Right? So yeah, they'll be playing Dollsville this week. So you look, so you look at the look at the, but you look at the Section Four champions, Double A Corning again, A now they because they're in Roma, they're now considered an A. UE is Union and the yep. Main and well, Shenango Force is the C champion. Tioga is the D champion, and Spencer Vanetten, another former Section champion, is now the uh, eight man. They were the eight man champs, eight-man. right? They, yeah, they combined with Cantor, one of their rivals. So I mean. It's the same names year after year in Section 4, and they seem to be the teams that still come out on top. Well, and, and, and there is, again, that's about continuity, tradition, commitment to the sport, uh, commitment to a t- teamwork, you know, year-round, not just during the season and preseason. Uh, I think that's a, a testament to the faith, trust, and belief in the, the importance of football and high school football in your community and all of those great communities. You can see there are legendary coaches at all those schools and, you know, through the years, and uh, that, that continuity is what builds tradition. Um, I will say this, you know, there's fewer B schools. I remember, and I think we talked about this on a previous podcast, I remember the Senango Forks staff saying, Coach, there's so much competition. We've had over 20 B schools before in Section Three. The, some years they have four, you know, in Section Four. And he goes, and, and they have to play an A or a Double A, so it's not like they have an easy schedule. They got a tough schedule. They're playing schools much bigger than them in Roma. But they said the competitiveness in the top half of the B bracket year in and year out. You guys kind of beat each other up a lot. And he goes, we think that's an advantage come playoff time sometimes, you know. Um, but I, 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 I don't necessarily agree with that because they are playing the A and the double A's in their non-conference games occasionally. And, uh, you know, so it, it's going to be, it's, it, this is going to be a, a real nice next step in the process for either team. Whoever's good enough to earn a win, uh, I think has a great shot of, of having a lot of fun the next two weeks as well. And, of course, a lot will depend on what happens with the main end well defense. Uh, we'll talk about here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, Homer does have another chance to do something. We've had 1,000-yard rushers. We've had 3,000-yard rushers <laughs> when you look at uh, things. But, ironically, 135 yards and 133 yards are needed by uh, uh, Sam Sorensen, the 135, David Morris, the 133. There's an odd chance if the ground game just continues to move the ball, you know, whether you score a lot or not, but if they move the ball – there's a chance Homer could have their first season with two 1,000-yard rushers in the same year, too. Yeah, yeah and as I, I may have hinted to, or I know I talked to you personally, but I don't know if we did on this podcast, both of our teams, I mean, they had the potential Class B Player of the Year 
uh, who went down to an ACL injury on their team. He's no, number 22, Jordan Owens, six foot 196 senior, plays like a tank. I mean, the kid is a tailback. The guy is a linebacker. And, and, and you know, in high school and college, coaches will say, I got to find a linebacker. What do they do? They go find the tailback that is the next in line because they know how to attack a hole and and you know everybody's pretty much in the gap controls principles well they lost a young man during the season due to a knee injury we lost logan peck you know so the similarities are pretty pretty wild uh in this situation so uh you know you're right i mean we have the privilege of, of maybe helping our guys to earn a uh, thousand yard seasons and and again i know they they aren't even talking about that or you know they know that it just so happened that at this point we said rather than make an excuse or say oh we lost our number one tailback they just said we've got to play hard and the offensive line and the tight ends and the fullbacks in this program are committed to making our run game work and our play action game work and uh, I, you know we had a guest Waylon McCall come to practice all practice yesterday and he just was so impressed how here we are with scheme and working on how to stop main end well on both sides of the ball and in special teams but what are we talking about our offensive senior right tackles had a heck of a year Blair there were a couple times in a row two plays in a row where he didn't get his second foot in the ground before the defensive lineman on the scout team ran into him so we you know look at Blair remember this is this is critical your goal has got to be to know your pre-snap target where are you going how are you going to identify if you got to come off level one to get to level two and uh, with that you need to get your second foot anchored in the ground he doesn't know the count you do so your first step is a gift for you second one's got to be down so you can keep your leverage keep yourself in a strong position protect your body so your mom's happy with me but also to be able to block and get things people knocked off the ball and uh, you know that's never going to change I mean that's who we are what we are we don't apologize for it I know many many Manuel has the same mindset. They do it out of the power run game. They have some eye roots, but they also, and you know, they run counter tray, you know, encounters and things, but they're uh, a double wing um, motion to the eye formation team and a lot of great option. So let's talk a little bit, uh, before, yeah, we'll talk, let's talk a little bit about the offense. And of course, we mentioned, uh, you know, Wolfhawk that went on to play at Army and stuff. Well, he was only a sophomore when Homer right, met right. him back in 2014. Well, they have a junior, and this time it's another Wolfolk. It's Tyrell. Tyrell Wolfolk is a, a junior. He's a 5'9 junior, so, I mean, yeah. He's a player. 33 wears Tyrell Wolfolk. 44, Ethan Sadler's a fullback as well. And they're true fullbacks. When they're in that single back set, it's a fullback with some – they have speed and power, but they're true fullbacks, and then they're wingmen. I told our players on our scout sheets, we identify them with Ws because those two wingmen are both – amazing ball you know ball catchers when they need to go out on pass routes so they can play the z spot but they both motion back into the i formation is what they're motioning back to so they can get a running start on their power game and uh you know when you look at that team they they've got tailback like kids in the in the wings so they got two tremendous fullbacks and wolf fork and uh sadler you know that they they can lead with they can run trap with they can run inside dive with they run veer with them so they got fullbacks that can handle the full repertoire of running and blocking and even sneaking out on a pass route occasionally um, and then those those wingmen are truly tailbacks in disguise so uh, a really out exciting fun run primary run oriented offense in the double wing you know they're looking to to, to control the ball, to control the clock, to move it, you know, as Tom, Tom Cottrell says, to matriculate, to work their way down the field. They don't care if they got to do it in a 17-play drive or a 15-play drive. They don't need to score fast, and they have the maturity and, and the patience with those quality running backs to get the job done. So what is, you know, like you say, the, you know, the double-wing offense, so kind of what, what do you expect out of their offense? Well, they're going to, you know, one thing, and, and this is from scouting report, Coach Gallagher, it just seems like, and we've seen him so many times because out of respect for their program, you know, we, you know, if there's a chance we were going to, we're going to have a shot at a run and win in the section three title, we're going to start sneaking a peek, you know, and we've got several years of film and they're, they're disciplined. Uh, you know, I don't know if he's doing it on a script, but it seems like in the first 10 to 15 plays of every game, they're going to, they're going to threaten you deep at least once or twice. Cause if you don't respect their pass game, they have athletes, they have athletes that can throw it. You know, number 14, Michael Mancini is a quarterback who can throw the ball down the field. He can throw it in the open areas. Um, so they're going to make sure you, if you don't respect their pass, they're going to burn you early. And that way you can't overload the box for their power game. As I said, the roots are in the I formation. Their double wing offense, which is really exciting, is uh, is a motion mostly to the I formation. Although they do run the jet sweep occasionally, where the motion is underneath, um, underneath handoff out of the shotgun, for example. 
So I expect you'll see uh, in the films we have from just this season, they have run what is the old Syracuse University quarterback step back on the midline. It's called midline freeze option, where they truly, the QB steps back and puts the ball in the belly of the fullback, and he comes right up the crack of the center. And that way, they're trying to suck the defense in. If the defense overcommits to the fullback, the quarterback pulls it and then runs the pitch phase with the tailback, who's usually coming out of motion. So, But they can do it out of the eye formation either way, and it's called freeze option. They run a dive option, straight dive to the right or left gap of the center, um, if 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 the uh, defensive line if they if he reads that the what's called the three technique the outside leverage to the guard if that player is playing too far into the gap or too far upfield they'll give it to the fullback and let him run into the linebacker right away and hopefully he gets to the third level and if if they're if we're stout in the line of scrimmage and that's how people that have stopped them have used quickness and and fill in the gaps to slow down their their fullback phase of their game. Then the quarterback truly reads it, pulls it, and runs the option phase. They run a veer option, old school diagonal slant of the fullback to the outside butt cheek of the guard into the three and four hole, we call it, or in defense, you'd call them the B gaps. So they run that diagonal veer where they fake, and it's just a diagonal ride to the full. Same scheme, but now you're reading a different player on the line of scrimmage. Um, they'll, they'll, depending on the team, they'll designate whether they're going to, you know, a guy that's going to be leveraged on the tackle or maybe even on the guard. They'll make that decision based on scouting plan. Then they run, uh, they'll run, you know, this, so I said that's the veer option. They actually had a gun of run speed option where the quarterback just sprints to the edge. Uh, leave, they'll leave one player unblocked on the contain, and, and if that kid comes down hard on the quarterback, he pitches it, and if he doesn't, then, then the quarterback keeps it and gets up the field. And like I said, I really respect the toughness of Michael Mancini. And like you said, he might have been one of those uh, – baseball playing pitchers or something on that World Series Little League team. I don't know, but, um, you know, Mike DeMatty, our assistant, might know that because he's a baseball nut. He loves baseball and follows it at every level. So, so yeah, they, their offense really – and you know what? Coaches that love the option game, they're smart because if you, if you can commit to it, and even though – I mean, their program has evolved to a level, not many would dare do what they do, run a midline freeze option, run the dive option, run the veer option, run the speed option. There's not many programs – they can do that but when you've had the tradition they have the continuity all the way down to their junior high and youth programs you can and it forces defenses to play assignment football if you kick if you're all over our quarterback and pitchman no problem we're going to feed it to the fullback and that's how they beat us in the second half at the in 2014 if you're all over if you're doing a good job on the initial phase of the option to the to the a or b gap with the fullback rides then they're going to they're going to go to the next phase quarterback keep or pitch to the to the option man we call it the pitch man the guy you're going to pitch the ball to so so they just are they 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 wholeheartedly believe in power football with the option being the steady piece of that power so uh you know i really respect the the discipline and you can tell the rehearsals gone on and on and on and they uh they really commit to it and that's why they're always year in and year out here they were a in the spring they're a larger school than us um they were up in a during the spring season and uh they came back down to b just barely next year they're going to be an a i heard they're going to be uh i think they're going to be a again next year if i remember right as is schools like new hartford's going to be back up in a in our section and so uh you know they're always on the fringe of that a b so they got a lot of athletes in that building and if you're a good athlete it may end well you're playing football um, as far as defense what uh do you expect out of the uh i kind of joked though, last week we it was uh, you know like that old uh Gladiator kind of feels Spartans against Trojans, while well, Spartans Trojans again this week. I mean, and well, of course, are the Spartans as well. So, yes. uh, what do you expect from the uh, defensive side of ME? Well, ME all year has been their base D's been a four front, a four four basically against power teams like uh, Shenango Forks, which they opened early. They walk those outside linebackers up, and they do a great job. They'll play at a six two. I would be stunned if we don't see that four four looking a whole lot like a six two against us. And I think they'll be, they they have they have confidence in both with their their cover kids, their linebackers and their defensive backs. They have confidence in playing both man and zone schemes, and because of that. They, uh, what they'll do is they'll load the box. They'll have at least eight. I wouldn't be shocked if, because we're a tight end oriented team. We've got, we always have at least one number two receiver near the run game, whether it's a tight end or the Z back in the slot. Uh, and I wouldn't be shocked to see their free safety being taught to read. And if he reads run, he's down into the box on the snap of the ball. So they have nine players coming after our run game. So I think you're going to see their 4-4 looking like a, uh, you know, a 6-2. 
They have roots in, in the odd front. In prevent, they'll do a little three five or even a three six with two deep scheme. It looks like on film. And we've seen them do it old. A lot of people, uh, the NFL and college made it popular for a while uh, where you'd go, we're going to, teams that throw a lot, which we're not, but teams that throw a lot in a prevent situation or a team that's going to throw the ball a ton, they will go with a four, five under man, two deep zone so that you get A gap and C gap rushes. The A gap guys are trying to flush the QB out. The C gap guys that are pressuring that quarterback's trying to crush them in. Um, and they'll go man to man underneath. So a quarterback will say, hey, wait, my, my fullback's coming off into the flat and he's wide open. Or, or he's going to run a, a, a what's called a two and go. So he'll run a flat route and turn up the sideline. You think, oh, I got him wide open. And, and there comes that zone safety behind it, attacking the football. So, again, well schooled. They'll know us. They'll know our routes. They'll know what we prefer to run. And so I wouldn't be shocked to see a little, you know, that combination concept where they might go man under coverage with zone in pass downs where, you know, we might need to be getting into a little bit of a hurry up or what we call our red offense. How about the line this week, you know, on the offensive line, defensive line? I know we've kind of been a little bit of a disadvantage the last couple of weeks, you know, size-wise. What, yeah. what are they looking like? Very similar. I mean, they're, they're stout. They're bigger than us uh, by weight. They're bigger than us by weight. They're good, strong kids. Like our kids are strong. Um, you know, we we probably, if we can if we can make our game plan at work, we've got some speed in the line of scrimmage. A little quickness that that is to, should be our little tiny edge. Not a big edge, but a little bit of an edge. You know, and in, in the uh, in the in the physical, if they can latch on you and get their hands on you, blocking you, um, you know, they might have a teeny bit of an advantage there. So, I expect more of the same that you've seen. I mean. Think about our playoff. You know, we come out of the blocks like crazy men in our last league game against Marcellus, but then CVA, VVS, New Hartford, all three of them, B, B powerhouse schools that play physical, big linemen in the trenches, and you're going to see more of that with Maine Enwell. I really respect that their big kids are very disciplined, um, great technique off the ball. They have an ability to uh, use their arm strength and bench pressure if they can get their hands on you, whether they're in the D-line or the O-line. So I think you're going to see a very similar uh, situation for Homer and Maine Enwell this week that you've seen in the last three weeks in our playoff. And how is how does Homebrook just be coming in, in into the game? You know, health wise, I know. You know, we, we we got our glimpse of Logan, but that probably was just the only glimpse we're going to see him in the postseason. But, yes, uh, um, we're, we're we're not going to win. We're we're really getting healthier by the day. Um, the, you know, we've got a couple guys with a, some sores, nothing big, you know, a chronic sore shoulder. You're straining, you're pushing, you're open hand punching when you're blocking and battling in the trenches. Um, you know, we got a, I've got a linebacker with a sore foot that's been sore for five weeks. It feels better now than it has the last five weeks. Um, Logan Peck's surgery was a week from yesterday. He'll be going in with Dr. Donahue um, on Wednesday of next week before Thanksgiving to get his meniscus and ACL repaired. And uh, so we... Uh, just just a, an amazing i want to i want people to understand you know that that we are in a position where our school nurses our training staff the the doctors that are going to do the surgery for logan peck for example you know it's amazing how when you approach people and you're dealing with young high school kids teenage kids there's such a respect for that that time period in life that everybody pulled together so logan peck our staff found a way to have logan have a moment that like a guy like me never had never got to get back on that field one more time you know and uh and so i'm proud of what our coaching staff did the hours that i put into communicating with trainers parents you know logan's mom has been a tremendous support system for me to help logan get that chance to get on the field one more time and then our training staff of josh brace from Cortland state and and obviously elise uh moran our chief trainer and dave boylan and tyler over in his office and just it's so awesome you talk about teamwork it took teamwork to make that happen and i'm just proud of everybody involved and proud of our school the, you know, like I said, Julie White in our nurse's office, um, the, and the entire nursing staff in the high school. There's just a commitment to love our kids and do the right by them, you know, so that in life they'll never look back with anything but appreciation and no regrets. And so, yeah, it, you know, you, probably, you saw Logan for the last time. Very little swelling after the game at all in that sore knee. And uh, so his surgeon's going to be pumped when he goes to fix him next Wednesday. And that, that's one of those dull moments, you think know, of a dull moment. That kind of takes me back to. I think it was the year that Cavs won. I think it was the 2016 final that Cavs won that they lost. Remember, they lost their quarterback, and he came in and took a knee. Like they called, called, Everybody goes, why are they calling a timeout with 15, 20 seconds to go? It was to bring that kid in. Yep. 
And he he come in. He was, you know he had been their quarterback for you know last the whole two season. Seasons. Yep. And he come up and took a knee. Just came in and took a knee for the, like the final play of the game. I and, took uh, an exchange from center. I got to I got to lead our team off the field in victory. You know and you know and that's that happens at every level. But at the high school level, and we've talked about this. You know I sent a nice note to Kurt over at Cortland State, and uh, you know what a great year we're both having. Uh, we we know how hard we work for kids. You know, but in high school. The only thing that could even remotely get close to the to the emotional intensity of high school football is Division three football, because almost none of them are ever going to get a glimpse at the next level, the professional level. So they're playing for their love of the game, and uh, you know they know that those Division three coaches know it. And when you got a great program like Cortland State, um, you know it, it is pretty cool. So you know it, it's it's it, selfishly that's why after 39 years I still. I still go to practice and love every day of practice, even when it's a tough day, even when a kid's grumpy, even when a kid has no right to have a negative attitude. But your, your job as their teacher is to say, look, we are in a privileged position. Not everybody gets to do this. Yes, you've worked hard. You made the commitment. And the other kids in the school don't have the guts to do that. But, you know, let's appreciate our time together. And, uh, you know, these are pretty special moments in life. I got a beautiful note from Tony Aguilar, who's an amazing head coach down in, in North Carolina. And, and, you know, he's in his 40s now, and he said, you know, it's just amazing. Like, we're at that age, you know, you might not feel comfortable saying it when you're a head coach. I was lucky enough to be head coach at 27. But, you know, I tell these kids almost every day, we love them. We sincerely love them. I mean, they're, you know, there are times we probably treat them better than our own children and that we're more patient with them than we probably were with our own kids. And, uh, and Tony hit the nail on the head. There's just something that forever, even if we never, let's say we don't talk for 20 years or we pass each other in, you know, at a theme park on vacation with our grandchildren, you know, uh, you, you just, you look at each other and it's like no time has passed and you just appreciate each other. And, you know, these are the things that make this so special and so unique, especially the sport of football. Yeah, I know that that's what that you're talking about. That's the picture you've had on Twitter the other day. Something showed up in his office. He's, you, you've had the privilege of having this for 10 straight years, the, court, the home yeah, court Yeah, the jug, home court jug. But the picture on his, on his uh, table, jugs. all three of the Cortica jugs yep. are uh, sitting on his table now. And the first time Cortland's done that in a while. So. Well, how cool is it that we live in a community where you have the biggest college football game, Division three in the nation, every year between Cortland and Ithaca? And you have that that long, century-long tradition. And then you have the tradition of the Homer Cortland game. Even when some years one of us is up or down, yeah, we've owned it a little bit lately. We've been able to win it more than they have. But if there's some, something special about no matter what our records are, you have a true rival. And I said those rivalries have evolved where with the social media. Everybody complains about the negative parts of it, which there are plenty. But the positive side is these kids in college, they're talking to each other FaceTime, and they're doing Instagram. and they're, You know, my high school team. I get a message out the old-fashioned way, which is considered old-fashioned. I text my seniors, and I text my juniors and sophomore. And, uh, and then what they do, 30 seconds later, it's on, they got a message on Instagram to everybody on the team to make sure nobody's left out. Um, you know, so I love that our community has those two. Those are, that tradition is one of the biggest traditions in the history of this nation, that Kordaka Jug. And, uh, and for our community to have the tradition we've had for over half a century with, with Cortland High, it, it's... I feel privileged that we're here. So what does Homer have to do? Uh, again, they kick off at 3 o'clock. Like we said, everything is a 3 o'clock kickoff from here on out. Saturday, 3 o'clock down at Vestal, uh, Homer against Main End. Well, what are the Trojans got to do on Saturday to, uh, to win and move on? You know, um, it, it, was, it was clearly the recipe last week. You know, how do you deal with adversity and mistakes made? Um, you know, we won the turnover battle 4-0 last week, even though we had a fumble. The boys were teasing Sam because he dropped the ball once and uh, immediately fell on it, recovered his own, and they said, hey, what are you trying to do, Sorensen? Pad those stats, you know, just teasing him in a healthy way. And, uh, but the, do the deal is, is that one of us is going to make a mistake early in the game, uh, whether it's main animal or homer. Somebody's going somebody's gonna to do something they traditionally don't do a week by week. And, and how you handle that, who handles the adversity early best, and then who has that stick to itiveness, I call it, the ability to say, if, if it's a grind, cherish that cherish that we love a grind right now it, it's been our i mean i just said we we've won three weeks in a row and i believe four weeks in a row we've won games that the team on the other side of the field was good enough to beat us even including marcellus which i know ended up extremely lopsided we played teams in these last four weeks that were clearly good enough to beat us and we managed to say 
don't overreact. Don't panic. Who cares? You know, let's say two minutes before we go out to warm up, hey, guys, there's an issue out in the bleachers. You know, we've got somebody that's ill. or So we're going to hold everybody off for a minute. You know, who, we'll deal. We'll deal with whatever comes away. And when the chance is to kick it off, we're going to kick it off with passion and have a lot of fun. And that's your know, key. Like you say, you know, uh, you know, a momentum changer that that happened in 2005 right off. I think it's a second half kickoff or a punt return early in the second half that, you know, turned a close game and, you know, force kind of went and pulled away. Well, the reality is in 05, it was the fullback running the ball inside on us and breaking free it was probably the biggest. It was in the third quarter early. Uh, and and, and I, I should remember for sure if it went for TD, but the reality is they blew that play open and it gave them all phases of their offense for Forks. And, and you know, that, that I don't want to say it broke our will at that moment, but it was like, uh-oh, there's a crack in the armor that they found and uh, we had no answer for it, you know. Um, I think that you're going to see these two teams, you know, we both, again, when you're in the playoffs, everybody's everybody's sound, everybody's solid, everybody's well coached. Uh, everybody's got players that have passion to play their hearts out. So, you know, we could see some back and forth for sure in this one. Yeah. And, of course, the main end world game was 27-10, but it was 2010 till late. I mean, so that was, of the three regionals, that was the closest one. But fourth, again, it was a couple early quick, you know, a couple quick scores again there that uh, – Kind of set the momentum of that game, and that, of course, was a 28-9 to nine, uh, loss right. against Forsta right. last time we were in the regional game. So, again, like you say, that momentum, and, and we've seen it. And, of course, like we said, we talked about so much against VVS. VVS had it to take a lead at halftime. Homer turned it around in the third quarter, went on their run, you know, retook the lead and uh, went on to win. So, I mean, like you say, it's it's just, it's you know, who, you know, who plays, you know, as cl- most close to a perfect game as you can. You know... <sighs> I showed up to Saturday's practice with, uh, it's actually the helmet my son wore in high school. Very simple. You know, it's not a fancy lineman helmet with some whacked mask on it. And I said to the guys, you know why we've won this last month? Right here. We don't pretend to be something we're not. We buy into what we are. We trust each other is going to work to get the job done. And, uh, you know, that'll be the key to what happens on the field this weekend. There's no debating that. So, um, you know, I think uh, that, that, as you've, you've pointed out with all these playoff things, there, there might be a momentum shifter. There certainly could be. And, you know, we saw it. Uh, you know, we have a tradition, and I don't mind that it's out there before our, our end of season celebration, which comes in December. Um, we're going to put the picture from the VVS game on our plaque. We do a gift plaque from the parents to the players every year. And people said, well, you're going to win it. You already won a sectional title. Well, when you put that on, it's important. That's awesome. That's amazing. And we win the state championship. We're not going to put a picture of the state championship on the plaque this year. We're going to put the picture of that 62 to 49 game. One of my assistants said, can we, can we Photoshop out the 49? I said, absolutely not. It ain't about, you know, it ain't about looking pretty and dominating. It's about deal with reality, give it your best effort, and if the score ends up, you know, 38-0, awesome. But if the score ends up 62-49, you bask in the reality that you played all 48 minutes and you gave it your best effort, and that's the key to success in life, to have the toughness and persistence to work and work and work and appreciate the work and fall in love with the work so that when the reward's there, you're going, this is pretty cool. This is a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, that's just emblematic of what we're going to expect to do, uh, you know, this weekend. And kind of like as you and I, we you talk, we talked a little bit about that yesterday about the pitcher and stuff, you know, to get you know trying to get the pitcher and stuff. Um, for these nineteen seniors, like you said, that was their last home game. Yep. And, and while well, what did they have for a junior season? They had a three game junior season. And now Which, seniors, now that you know, like I said, now and then they've just parlayed that three game warm up into a twelve game winning winning streak overall. And yep. Are now going in, you know, into regional play. So yeah, that was their last home game they'll ever play at Butts. So it's, it seemed like an apropos, you know, just like, as when you talk about traditions and different things. Tradi- just that seems to be an apropos moment. Sure, sure. And and again, it's not like I'm trying to make these earth-shaking uh, revela- you know, uh, revelation type statements with that. But I just, you know, when I was riding home, uh, you know, I was coming home from actually our staff meeting that that next Sunday night, and I said, you know, no matter what happens here. There's, there's something there's, there's something about all this stuff we I don't I hate to use the word preach because we model the behavior we expect out of our players uh, my my former player Waylon McCall who uh, came to practice yesterday um, you know he was a junior and I asked him I said would you be willing to speak to our team 
because here he's 48 years old and uh, he lives down in Atlanta, Georgia. Now he was in Carolina for quite a while. And, and, he, and he said, sure, coach, I will. He goes, I'm not a great public speaker. I said, yes, you are. Because you're you, you're, you're you're who you are, and as I brought him up, I you know I, he he graduated in, in the '90s, and I said, uh, this is a young man that is you guys. I said, and he goes, well, he's I think he grinned because I said young man at age 48, but I said, here's the deal. I said, Mr. McCall, Waylon McCall, when what did, what were you in your junior or high school football? He goes, I was a JV football player. Our JV team had n- poor numbers, only four true linemen on the entire roster. So he was going to be a rotator at best with the varsity his junior year. I sat him down and said, would you be willing to be unselfish? Go help our JV program for a year. You're probably going to play every down of the game, which will help you to become a – you're already a leader by example, but you'll be a verbal leader. You'll be a le-. And he said, Coach, I will absolutely do whatever it takes to help our football program. He does an amazing job. The JV team has an amazing season because of his leadership. And he turns around and he starts for us as a senior and he's a captain. He's a leader. I told the kids he's a basketball player. They didn't look like a basketball player, but whoever he covered hated him because he had tenacity, you know. And uh, and he went on to be an all-star, all-league football player for our team as a senior. And his message to our kids was like the broken record that Jim Whitten and I and Tom Cottrell and all of us share every year, every week with our kids. He said, guys... You're going to be me someday. You're going to be 48 years old. And you're going to be a now beauty of the internet. You're going to be talking to your buddies you graduated with. You know what we're going to be talking about? We're not going to be talking about all the other sports we played. We're going to be talking about the moments in high school football we were on the field together or in practice together or at team meal together. And uh, he says, I'm telling you, you wait and see. I know guys I graduated with, basketball was their first love. Lacrosse was their first love. And they talk about it. But he goes, when they're talking passionately and emotionally, they're talking about their high school football years. I couldn't have asked for a better message to be sent because his style is why we're playing this weekend. What Waylon McCall stood for is why our great high school football team is playing football in the uh, Elite Eight of New York State. Well, Coach, congratulations. You know, like I said, getting back to the regionals. Fourth, fourth time the team's been in the regional since uh, 2005 now. It's just the fourth trip there against... Uh, 3 o'clock kickoff on Saturday down at Vestal High School against uh, a familiar foe, main and well. They say they're familiar foes when you get to the regionals anymore. Yes. But uh, best of luck to the Trojans, and uh, let's see if we can uh, keep the season of first going on with a uh, trip to the state semis. Well, that's that's the plan. Work our tail off and get it done on Saturday. Tom, thanks for all your support, and thanks for uh, letting us do this. I know I've had a lot of people reach out to say they're really enjoying the podcast more and more. And I told them, we'll go back through the archives and listen to all of them if you want to. It's Some of it's interesting stuff. You know, you get sick of me, listen to the kids, listen to the special guests, you know. And uh, I really uh, I really think that uh, you're doing a positive thing for our community. Thank you. And again, like I said, I think, well, the biggest thing I think we were worried about how we were going to get kids on this year. And I think it's a blue-collar play. Well, I guess we've had 22 uh, blue-collar people awarded since we started doing this. And three of them couldn't make it with different commitments here and right. there. But we've had 19, you know, we've had over half the team has uh, been on the podcast, and it really hasn't been, uh, some of them have turned out to be very key stars, but a lot of them haven't been that key star. They're, as I jokingly call them, they're part of the uh, reminiscence of the uh, Spoon's Goon Platoon. Yes. They're just yep. the guys that are grinding it out, but, you know, they've all got it, you know, it's it kind of is giving the people to meet that, and, I mean, I don't want that then. I want to keep doing these guys, you know, for another sure. couple, three weeks, but... I'm looking forward again to getting back to the alumni. Like you said, Tony Aguilar was a yeah, riot to talk yeah, to and yeah. get the, get back and get live some more memories with some of these uh, guys. And uh, I know one that uh, I just well, Larry Brady helped me out. He sent me sure. an email because we uh, and I agree with him. I'll try to work with you on that. He said we want to try to you know he, we always talked about as a leading receiver of all time, Jimmy Curry. Oh, Jimmy Curry. And yeah. So I got his email. Speed and, demon, and, man. They're saying, but they're saying, wow, we need to get him in the Hall of Fame, Larry says. Yeah, and yeah. I said, yes, yeah, so we got to work on getting Jim in there. But, Jimmy you know, can play he, football, he, he I'll tell be, you. He could be fun because he was one of those, uh, you know, first uh, sectional championship teams there in the 80s. So, yep. I mean, he'd be a – yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. again to that part of the when sure. we get to that. It's fun. I, I'm not looking forward football. to it yet. No, I know. Me. I want this to keep rolling. We huh. got a couple more weeks of football. Oh yeah, we got to get up to almost Christmas here and get you know the whole yeah. football season over first. But again, thanks, coach, and uh, best of luck you on Saturday. It. And that'll do it for this edition of Trojan Football Talk today. Show brought to my American Credit Union for every day for everything located. Next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of Trojan Football Talk. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland. 
it's Route 281 in Cortland, the home of No Hassle, No Razzle Dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yeeman Real Estate at the entrance to Yeeman Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C, make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobos in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary specific options. Nikki C's, your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland, founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customers' needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at IsaacMerker.com or on their Facebook page. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO. That's 753-8646. And look for their new food truck in the spring of 2022. By Crop Growers LLP, your first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact KC Slade at 607-591-2460 for more information. And by the First National Bank of Dryden at 12 South Main Street in Homer. Safe, secure, and locally owned for all your banking needs. For more information, stop by, call 607-662-7100. For uh, four one seven nine, excuse me, six six two four one seven nine, or check them out online at drydenbank.com. Again, seven o'clock, three p.m. Uh, uh, excuse me, three o'clock Saturday kickoff is what I'm trying to say down at Vestal, Homer, and Main End. Well, for the regional central region title, should be a good one. We hope to see you there. Thanks to Coach Basilic for joining me in today. This is Tom Vartanian. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon.